Stream decks are amazing tools that are extremely helpful for improving your content as a streamer or any other type of creator. But did you know they can also be used for productivity? And they also have exclusive features on Mac. First off, this content is original, but I did write an article on it for makeuseof.com covering very similar features, particularly Mac exclusive plugins on the Stream Deck. If you'd like to go through that at your own pace, go ahead. But this will be covering uh, more than just Mac exclusive features. So let's get started. We're gonna go over three parts in this video. First, why I have two Stream Decks and an Avermedia AX310. Two, productive commands for everyone regardless of your operating system. And then three, Mac exclusive features and plugins. Why do I have two Stream Decks? I have one right here and one right here. And then I have my Avermedia thingy right here. So many shortcuts in front of me at any given time. The Avermedia has 20 shortcuts. This has 15 and this has 32 potential things open at one time. It's a little bit excessive, but I like having everything in front of me. Don't judge me, okay? I have two different primary functions for each of my stream decks. My regular stream deck is a smaller screen with fewer buttons, so it's harder to get lost on that screen, which means I primarily use my regular 15 key stream deck for hotkeys, particularly in software like Adobe Premiere Pro and Notion. With my Stream Deck XL, which has 32 keys, um, I primarily use that as a menu and archive. Because there's a bigger screen and more buttons, it fits everything, but you might have to like look for a little bit longer to find any given command. So any commands that I want to have at like extreme access on a, on a short notice, I don't necessarily want to have that on my XL, but I do want that on my regular size Stream Deck. So if we're looking at my XL, it's it's a bit of a mess right now because I just have a lot of the things that I want to showcase on the front page. But right here is my profile for lighting because I have three key lights and then a Philips Hue. So I have everything set right here. Like if I want to change, uh, if I want to increase the brightness on my front light, I can do that. Oh my God, I'm overexposed now. Or if I want to, oh, okay, now it looks really dark. Or I want to turn off my accent light or I want to turn off my mini light, which is yet another accent light, I can do that. Or if I want to change the uh, white balance, I can look real toasty, uh, look like I've been in the sun for a little bit too long, or I can use whatever I have as a default. This is my lighting menu. I don't change it very often, but I want to have every possible command related to my lighting right here, easily accessible. I have presets, I have adjustments for brightness, I have a preset for warmth, then I have adjustments for uh, color, uh, color temperature, white balance, white balance, that's it. Then if you compare that to my uh, stream deck, uh, it's much smaller. Does the average person need two stream decks? Absolutely not. Most people are more than fine with just one stream deck in their arsenal. Especially when Elgato has made powerful utilities for organizing your pages like profiles, pages. If you're smart and make intuitive profile page and file systems in your stream deck, you definitely don't need an Excel. But I just like every having everything out in front of me. Next, we're going to be going over productive commands or utilities that anybody can use. I have a better creating. He has a bunch of uh, Notion stuff, particularly uh, a stream deck icon set, which also has, of course, the uh, a preset with all the commands. So I have this, which is really useful for when I use Notion. And then I also have a bunch of commands for Adobe Premiere in a folder. I don't use all of these super often, but these Adobe Premiere commands are very accessible, so I don't need to remember every single keyboard hotkey. Do note that for a lot of things, keyboard hotkeys frankly are faster than setting up a Stream Deck, but if you have your Stream Deck in a super accessible spot, you get used to using it, and then you have the most frequently used commands there, it can be really natural to use for productivity. But you can also set stuff like application or website shortcuts. So for example, if I want to open like Adobe Premiere Pro, I just click that button um, and it opens Premiere Pro. That way I don't need to get lost in like my applications or going through folders and then get distracted and forget that I wanted to edit videos. It's right there, right in my face. You can do the same thing for websites and if you want to go real crazy, you can create a uh, multi-action if you work in social media you want to open all your tabs at once and you don't want to get distracted in your internet browser. So you can set a multi-action that opens all the software you need, all the websites you need, and then you don't need to accidentally distract yourself. I'm speaking from experience because uh, on Avermedia's offering, um, back when I worked for them, I basically set up a command to open everything with one button that I would, could possibly use for work so that I wouldn't get distracted getting to all those pages. 
It's extremely useful and it helps to eliminate distractions so much and reduce friction from thinking about work to starting work. And whether you have a Stream Deck or an Avermedi AX310 or a Loop Deck or any other of these devices, they're extremely useful in a productivity sense for setting shortcuts for applications so you don't get distracted or lost going through your file systems. The main draw of using hotkeys in software is that, of course, it can be a little bit faster than actually learning all the hotkeys, but there's two main scenarios that I that I view for the draw of using a Stream Deck or any other tool like that to, for hotkeys. A. Maybe you don't want to learn or have a hard time remembering some hotkeys. And B. If you want to put your Stream Deck in a spot such that it's extremely convenient to use, like for example, right next to your keyboard, then, then that makes it super easy to work through something. For example, if you're working on the A cut of a video in Premiere Pro and you just like have your tool switchers and ripple delete and all of that all in just your shortcuts on your Stream Deck, you can go so fast in editing. It is absurd. I've done that a couple times when I, I like for more complex cuts of videos when I have all the commands all together. It doesn't save a ton of time, but it just feels so good to use. Another thing you might want to use is frequently copied text for productivity. If you work in social media, as, as my career trajectory primarily is, you might make commands for like canned responses, uh, support inquiries, influencers reaching out for brand deals, things like that. If you're a coder, you might make a command for frequently repeated lines of code because the Stream Deck you can, has a text command. So if I buy like, I like to eat food and then I have a note and then I put text, I like to eat food. So it, it puts in the command just like that. Last, we'll be going over a few rapid fire features that you can use for productivity. So for example, there are plugins for Zoom, there are plugins for Slack, so you can control your calls or control your like availability for work. You can run timers, you can get calendar notifications. There's so many different productivity utilities you can use on your Stream Deck. It's kind of absurd. We'll be going over Mac exclusive plugins. There are a lot of Apple ecosystem features that of course aren't accessible on Windows like shortcuts, finder tags. There are several plugins that are exclusive to Mac OS and extremely useful for productivity if you are a Stream Deck owner and a Mac user. So let's get started with the shortcuts plugin. So let me, let me just get that launched real quick. I, I discussed this more at length in my article for Make Use Of. To get the shortcut plugin and other Mac exclusive plugins or other plugins in general, simply click right here on the Stream Deck software and it'll open the Stream Deck store and then just search for whatever you want. So in this case, we'll be searching for shortcuts. And uh, yeah, that's it right here. It's super useful. I, I like this a lot because Shortcuts are an extremely useful uh, Apple ecosystem utility, but if you're on Mac, they're not particularly accessible. If you want to, to trigger a shortcut, you need to like open your shortcuts app and then scroll down to the shortcut that you want and then click it. So if they're not in your face and you have to take that many steps to get to it, they're not really useful. Whereas on a phone, you can put the shortcuts on your home screen in a widget super accessibly or as like a, as like a Siri command. There's a lot you can do with shortcuts that is present on phones, but really hard to access on Macs. And the shortcut command for Stream Deck makes shortcuts useful and accessible. I use a additional shortcut utility called Notimate, which it allows me to put Notion things into my shortcut utility. So I've made a shortcut that's a little long and convoluted. It allows me to make a calendar event and then with just a little bit of tagging, it also appears as a task in Notion for me. So if I just like tap this button right here. So I, I set a couple of uh, like parameters that I add at the end of the title. So if I make a, a shortcut, like if, if I set this to be like edit a stream footage P1CC, I basically programmed it that P1 sets it as high priority, CC set, tags it as content creation. So then done. And then that, that made uh, an event on my calendar as well as a task in Notion. Very useful. Next up, we're gonna be going over finder tags. Let's say I have a bunch of things that I've uploaded and I just wanna be, make clear that I have uploaded and edited them. So TikTok slash YouTube shorts that I made, let's say I wanna label them as, okay, they're uploaded. I simply press the uh, finder tag button and it labels them as red. But that's not the only thing it can do. There is a color wheel option where if I select it, 
it cycles through different colors in the color wheel. So if I, I, I can set a custom color wheeler right here to, for example, so I, I can remove some of the colors. So if I just want to be like red, yellow, green, the first stage is I need to upload it to YouTube. That's the red. The second stage is I need to upload them to TikTok because TikTok, you have, you can only upload up to 10 days in advance for scheduling. Then that's the next one. And then green means I'm done. So that's one just very rudimentary example of the utility of the finder tags. And while finder tags, yeah, you can just click, right click, and then change the tags like that. This is a little bit faster and the color wheel util and the color wheel utility is outrageously useful. So next up, uh, we're gonna be going over a little convoluted combination of things that I use. For Stream Deck, there is a plugin for a Keyboard Maestro which is a really advanced macro tool. One of the things that this macro tool can do is simulate typing. That has an additional utility. So because of this one other software that I use called Text Expander, you can make snippets, but the snippets only trigger if like you're actually typing them. So if you'd like paste, if I made an abbreviation, colon pitch right here, but if I, if I, if I tried to uh, press the button right here, pitch, it wouldn't prompt the text expander snippet to trigger. I will link to somebody else's video about how to actually set up the pipeline. But the gist is I have text expander, which must be triggered by typing. Stream Deck's text thing functions as a copy and paste. So the way that I do that is I use yet another software, Keyboard Maestro. I can make a macro, insert text by typing, and then I can make that the snippet that I would have on text expander. So this is the abbreviation. I type that in and it makes the text expander thing appear. And then I can use a plugin called KM link, which is a keyboard maestro link. Select the macro that I have for text expander. And then I can press the button to trigger the snippet with all its dynamic template-esque glory. So it appears on my other monitor, but there it is right there. I press the button and that appears. So if I just like do blah, blah, boo, you were, you were, <laughs> and then I just select the types so I can do all that. And then I press one button, fill in a couple prompts, and it's so useful for things I write all the time. Text Expander, in addition to having like dynamically fillable things, also supports a lot of really, really advanced formatting. Like you can add images, you can add links, which is all stuff that like the built in text pasting thing in Stream Deck does not allow for. This is all to say, the text expander is one of my absolute favorite tools to use as a social media person. If you're a coder, you might have templates for frequently used bits of code. There's so many different use cases for it. I will link to somebody else's video who taught me how to do this whole really convoluted pipeline. And then there are other Mac exclusive commands, like you can toggle airplane mode, you can use shortcuts to like change focus modes, whatever. But the most useful things that I've found are triggering shortcuts, setting your finder tags, and then keyboard maestro and all of its things. Keyboard maestro has far more features than just pretending to type. Like you can use keyboard maestro to make a bunch of a long string of commands as a multi-action or trigger shortcuts or things like that. I don't know if I did justice to all of this in explanation. You can read my article on this from makeuseof.com by Andy Cormier because the keyboard master part will be explained in much better detail here. This tutorial is very in depth. Go through it at your own pace. If you're confused by anything, just read the make use of article. I get a bit of ad revenue from it. The company benefits. It makes me look good as an author. So go crazy. So let's do a quick recap. Stream decks are more than just streaming tools. They can be used for amazing productivity. Of course, I have multiple stream decks because I'm a freak and I like having all my buttons in one place, but the average person only needs one regular size stream deck, one little stream deck Mark II. I have an Amazon affiliate link in the description of this video. You should buy it. It's really useful. Useful for productivity tools like um, opening application or website shortcuts, frequently copied text, lots and lots of useful plugins that can be used for productivity like a Pomodoro timer, setting your status on Slack, controlling Zoom calls. There's so many productivity features on the Stream Deck that can be used on any operating system. And to compound this, if you're a Mac user, there are even more productivity features that can be found in Mac exclusive plugins, such as triggering shortcuts, setting finder tags, and using Mac exclusive software like Keyboard Maestro. If you're a Mac user who's both productive and creative, you might consider streaming. And if you do, 
you might be able to use your M1 MacBook as a streaming machine. Click right here for an in-depth setup to how to set up a M1 or otherwise Apple Silicon MacBook as a streaming machine. Be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Best of luck and happy creating.